Les. Hold on. Come on. Come on. You got this. Hey! What's up, friends? My name's Aaron Ciotti. Everybody calls me Ciotti. I walked in the door like five minutes ago. I still have my shoes on. Um, yeah. Welcome to Workbench Wednesday. Uh, how to install a drone, an FPV drone flight controller. Uh, and Q&A, and a little bit of mailbag, and of course... あきらめんなよ。諦めんなよお前。どうしてそこで We are gonna need the spirit of Clam Man tonight because we're gonna be working on quads and it's the worst. <laughs> uh, it shouldn't be that bad. It's a brand new flight controller. Uh, it's one that I haven't worked with before though, so I'm gonna have to look up. You okay, buddy? 
we're gonna have to uh, look up the pinouts and all that fun stuff. Uh, in the chat, Paul McDonald was first. Chasing FPV was next. Brandon's baked beans. Jackalope. JT Custom Knives. Ram Jam. Wam FPV. Dylan Merck. Uh, June Loco. CK FPV. Alleyoop. Paul McDonald. Demenis. Frank Nicholas. And I've got everybody. If you want to talk directly to me in the chat, all you got to do is type C out of FPV. You don't have to put an at in front of it, but you certainly can if you'd like. Uh, this is my full-time job. If you want to support me, head over to CiatiFPV.com. Click all the buttons. Patreon helps me out the most. There's a Teespring store, Fiverr page. I'm doing a bunch of, let me work for you. Let me teach you how to fly a little bit better. Let me teach you how to build better. Let me teach you how to tune better. Um, and then, uh, yeah, there's a Teespring uh, page with a bunch of shirts and a bunch of cool stuff on there. Um... Etsy store with some stickers and some random hardware, and then there's a whole bunch of affiliate links. If you ever find yourself doing an order on Amazon, FPV Crate, uh, and a bunch of other websites, if you hit my affiliate links over at CIDFPV.com before you check out, I'll get 1-6% to of your entire order, and I'll spend it on FPV stuff to do more reviews and smash it into brick walls, you know, the norm. Um... It is, uh, with whoop season approaching us, uh, I flew the little 65 around, uh, at Maggie's house, actually, last night, which was super, super fun. She's got this, um, she's got a, a big dive gap. You know what? Let's just, uh, I haven't even looked at it yet. Let's take a look at it together. What do you say? Uh, if I come in here... Ah, that memory card is called Wanglebork. Okay. All right. I'm down with that. So let's... You okay, buddy? What's going on? Do you eat too fast? Take it easy, buddy. It's okay. It's okay. Um, this is the one. Let's... Mute it. Because that's a nightmare. Uh, well, yeah. This is, YouTube's going to destroy the quality, but... Look at this big dive. Look at this big dive. I got rejected immediately. <laughs> Just instant rejection. This is the second battery that I flew. Um, so this is my 60, ultimate 65 millimeter build, basically. Uh, Newbie Drone V1 flight controller, uh, their cockroach frame, their goober canopy. Uh, it's actually got the... Uh, the Insta360 Go TPU holder up on top of it, which, like, seems to make it more durable, which is kind of cool. Uh, and, yeah, I was just kind of playing around this little dive. I, I haven't necessarily found, like, a really good flow around the house yet. Uh, Duke, her little doggy, was a little bit upset with the amount of noise. Look at this. It got stuck to the, uh, it got stuck to the railing, and I managed to recover it. That was pretty slick. Um... Yeah, I gotta find a cool flow. I was just kind of an enamored by that uh, by that dive gap there. Uh, the rest of this build is the the Gem Fan uh, 1.2 inch quad blade propellers and the Happy Model 0802 uh, 25,000 kV motors, and then this is with the Newbie Drone Gold 250s. So yeah, I gotta find a good uh, I gotta find a nice line that I can kind of run around. <laughs> Man, I, can't I was really kind of cheating the, uh, the edge of the, um, of the railing there. I think I got it really clean here. I got it clean a bunch of times on the first battery and then I started overthinking it for this battery. I was trying to kind of cheat it a little bit. Um, but yeah, really, really fun little dive gap and uh, nice little loop there. I don't know. Well, I'll, I'll figure out a cool little path to rip around here. The fan was on uh, in the living room there, which was kind of blowing me around, which is funny. I'm also super excited for that right there. That, uh, big-ass backflip. I think what I'm gonna end up shooting for is that big backflip up onto there and then just throw it forward and matty it down, blindly down that hallway. Um, it's a, there's, there's a good amount of space there. Um, max current, 15 amps. Look at you go, little tiny whoop. 15 amps max g-force 3.6 g's that's enough to kill a man not really uh so yeah that was super 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 fun it was really nice to uh to fly this tiny whoop again man i i i forgot i forgot how 
I mean, it just rips. Like, like you guys saw it. I mean, it, like this setup is outrageous, um, and it's not even like the lightest it can be. Like this setup can be quite a bit lighter, um, which I am gonna build. I have the um, I have the tiny whoop pinch cam, and I have the. Um, uh, Meteor 65, I think it is, frame, is the lightest frame. Um, I have another set of these 25,000 KVO-802s. Um, plenty of these props, of course. And um, what I don't have, though, is another one of these AIOs that I want to use. So I have three of these Newbie Drone version 1 AIOs. Two of them are going to get built. One of them already is with a 75 millimeter. Um, Insta360 GO 2 carrier, and I'm going to do the same thing with the other um, with the other V1 newbie drone board. So I've got to figure out a um, another AIO to go with. There's a couple new 1S AIOs. There's a Flywoo, I want to say, and there's maybe a Goku. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to try one of those, and uh, yeah, we'll see. So this should be a fun. Uh, whoop season here coming up, but man, this thing—it it just shreds. It's—it's just—it's so impressive. Um, even with the the bunny ears up top uh, to carry the Insta360 Go One, it still just flies so good. And it's got um, and it's got an axi, which is pretty heavy. This is like a heavy. This is a heavy whoop. Without the battery, let's see where it's at. No battery, it is at, yeah, see, this is heavy as hell, 24.6 grams, let me, um, it might even be a little bit more, no, yeah, 24.6 grams, that's pretty heavy, um, 24.7, uh, the, um, uh, SR71, he was always shooting for 20 grams, as was I, I used to always shoot for, like, 20 grams, 21 grams, um, for a tiny whoop, What's nice is we've now got motors that make enough power to move something that's this heavy around. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. What's interesting is that, the you know, just like 5-inch rigs, just like all other rigs, the heavier it is, the more throw it's going to have. And the throw feels pretty nice. Like, being able to just huck it up over that uh, over that railing is, uh, is pretty slick. So, yeah, we'll see. Um... I'm going to do that. So this build is kind of specifically for carrying the Insta360 Go 1. Um, the Whatever the next 65mm motor-to-motor build uh, that I do is, is not going to be for that. It's just going to be 100% freestyle, um, you know, DVR. So that was, that was um, DVR from the um, Immersion RC Power Play. Uh, which records 60 frames a second, really good quality, right out of the goggles. Um, so yeah, the other whoop that I build is just going to be for collecting DVR off of this guy, which should be pretty fun. See how light we can get it. I wouldn't be surprised if I can get it down to like 22 grams. Um, the uh, the tiny whoop. Hey, can you guys get to tinywhoop.com? It's, um, it's not, uh, it ain't working for me. It won't let me get there at all. Can you guys check, see if you can get over there? Uh, Jack, let me get caught up on the chat, chat here. Jackalope FPV says, uh, Seattle FPV is gonna love digital whenever the day comes. Absolutely hauling ass uh, in this opening rip. Um, yeah, I don't know. The, the latency, the increase in latency with digital is, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's um, there's a lot of disadvantages to digital that nobody really talks about that I probably talk about too often. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I I see its value with like a tiny whoop, uh, not a tiny whoop. Sorry, uh, a cine whoop, because a cine whoop is going so slowly um, that being able to see farther ahead is definitely going to help out. Um, but with five inch rigs, I, I just don't know. The, the, the faster late, I don't know. The, the big decrease in latency on analog, um, yeah, I don't know. 
there are a couple pilots who have gone to digital and gone back to analog. Um, many of them I trust. So yeah, I don't know. It'll be interesting. I, I, I can I can see the value, like I said, on Cinewoops, but what I don't want is to have to have a set of DJI goggles and then a set of Fat Sharks. Um, that's too much. Um, and before anybody says, just get the Digi adapter for the for the um, uh, for the uh, uh, for the DJI goggles, um, I've talked to a couple people that have used those, and they all say that they're absolutely awful. Um, and it's a terrible, terrible, terrible flying experience. So that's definitely not going to happen. Um, I don't know. I'm probably going to stick on analog for a while longer. Um, it works incredibly well. It is bomb proof. Um, it is, you know, tried, tested, true, good to go. Um, at some point when the latency gets figured out with DJI, it'll become a lot more intriguing. Uh, and also when there's a good quality nano camera, that'll definitely help out too. Uh, but analog is great. I mean, my, my analog setup works really, really, really well. Um, I was flying around a shitload of power lines today and I could see all of them. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like, I get it. I, I, I totally understand digital is, is a more immersive experience and whatnot, but it's really not about the immersive experience for me. It's about getting the footage. Um, and analog does that staggeringly well. So, yeah, I mean, to spend tons and tons and tons of money on digital to get very little improvement, like, you know, when, when you look at, like, everything, when you look at all the things, all the pros, all the cons, um, there's just... Yeah, I mean, digital just isn't there yet, in my opinion. You guys are certainly allowed to disagree, but you're wrong. So, you know. Alley Oop says, what's up? Dusty Joe FPV says, what's up? CMYK says, yo, bro. Uh, Paul McDonald says, uh, that's a requirement for CID FPV. Uh, Demenis was saying, you can do an Insta360 on a whoop that small? Yep. Uh, on the 65 mil whoop, it's got, with this setup, with these motors, with these propellers, with the Newbie Drone Gold batteries, um, it's got enough power to move the Insta360 Go 1 around. I've got a bunch of um, examples of flying this around on that whoop on my Instagram and on my YouTube. Um, and then the 75 millimeter whoops uh, make enough thrust to carry the heavier Insta360 Go 2. Uh, but what I'm waiting for is a mount. There, there's no way, there's no good mounting solution for the Insta360 Go 2 uh, on a tiny whoop quite yet. Uh, so I'm just kind of waiting for that. I know it's something that Dalton over at Newbie Drone is working on. Um, I keep bugging him like once a month, like, hey, is it ready yet? Hey, is it ready yet? Um, and it doesn't seem to be ready yet, but it's worth waiting for. Uh, YouTube just did the thing, scrolling back up. CMYK FPV says, all my 5-inch and 3-inch quads are trash, so I've been ripping my V3 uh, BBL 65mm. I need to get some of those higher KV whoop motors. Um, yeah, CMY, you're going to love it. Uh, the the 25,000 KV motors are nuts. They, they fix the majority of the flight performance issues that Tiny Whoops have. Uh, Dusty Joe FPV says, you ever look at Jack's 3D printing for a 65mm frame? I have tried 3D printed 65 millimeter frames before and they are awful. Um, there's just no way, um, they're, they're just not strong enough. They don't crash well. Um, it's just not a good solution. Uh, you really need, uh, I mean, in my opinion, the, the cockroach, it's, it's cockroach frame or nothing. Uh, the meteor frame is not nearly as solid of a frame, but apparently it crashes a little bit better because it's a little bit more bendy and it's a little bit lighter. So with that um, DVR only whoop that I'm gonna eventually build here, um, I'm gonna move away from the cockroach frame initially, but then I am gonna swap it over to the cockroach frame um, at some point. The, the thing that I really like about this, and this also goes for the 75 millimeter version of this frame, is that it's just so much stiffer than all of the other frames. Um, so you can really get a much better PID tune on these little guys. Uh, and I just don't like the way that they fly without a really jacked up tune. 
Um, they're just kind of floppy and like you're trying to fly them indoors where there's like a million things to hit. So having a really dialed in tune, getting those P gains up into like the 90s, 100s, 100s 110s um, really makes a huge difference for me. Um, you know, there, there might be better pilots that are able to fly with a shittier tune, uh, but I'm not one of them. Uh, and that's okay. Chris Croft says, uh, loading for me in Australia, it looks like a bunch of you guys are able to get to tinywhoop.com. Interesting. Uh, is anybody on Chrome able to get there? Uh, Demenis says, Sharkbite Tinywoop, probably not. Uh, the, the Sharkbite camera and VTX are just going to be way too heavy, um, to really have a, a Tinywoop that performs well. And for me, it's more about the performance than anything else. Also, the, the shark bite stuff is going to be a lot less durable, um, which is a really, really big deal for me with tiny whoops because, as you guys can see, I, you know, I'm reckless with them. I'm firing them up over um, uh, railings and in between the thing. You know, it's, it's just chaos. Uh, Scott Abramzik says latency is a lie. Not true at all. Uh, Chris Croft says, I have DJI and Orca. The AVI in goes to black screen when signal gets low. That's a little scary. Uh, Flyzone Drone says, have you tried Sharkbite yet? I have not, Flyzone. Um, Sharkbite is only 200 milliwatts. And my 5-inch rigs and my uh, Cinewoops, I can't run those on 200 milliwatts. That's just not enough. Um, I'm in a situation where I'm using the majority of my rigs for paid gigs, uh, sorry, unpaid gigs, um, and yeah, I just, I can't have 200 milliwatts. That's just not enough. Um, I have Sharkbite. Uh, FPV Exchange sent me the, um, the, the Sharkbite module here and uh, the, the double stack 20x20 20 20 VTX a long time ago now, actually. Um, but yeah, once I realized, I mean, th the initial issue that I had was that that VTX didn't fit in any frames that I flew. Uh, and then when I realized that it was only 200 milliwatts, I was like, well, fuck, like I can't really do anything with that. Um, what I'm thinking of doing, I got, um, I bought the new Sharkbite VTX, the single stack 20 by 20, um, which also won't fit in any frames that I fly. Um, but I think that this will fit in a rip squeak. Uh, so I am going to be building a rip squeak designed to carry the Insta360 GO 2. Um, and I think I can maybe fit this VTX in there so we can have a, um, a shark bite micro. Uh, at 200 milliwatts, realistically, a micro. Uh, is the only thing that's going to work. A Cinewoop would technically work, but when I fly the Cinewoops on these gigs, I'm trying to go in, you know, inside buildings through into the next building on the back side of the building and stuff like that. And yeah, 200 milliwatts just ain't going to cut it. Um, but with a three inch rig just specifically built to fly for fun, now we're talking. So at some point here, I will get Shark Bite up in the air. Um, but again, like, until they've got some 500 plus milliwatt VTXs that are not fragile, for those of us that fly freestyle, it's kind of like, what's the point? Unless unless you're putting it into like a three inch rig, then it makes sense, right? Because a little three inch rig isn't gonna be able to cover enough ground to really outrun 200 milliwatts. I mean, it will, but realistically with a three inch rig, you're not gonna be flying it in big complex spots. You're gonna be flying it you know, off your front deck in the parking lot or, you know, at a smaller park, stuff like that. Smaller locations um, is where a three inch rig is, you know, best suited. And that's where 200 milliwatts is also going to work. So we'll get there. Uh, CMYK says tinywoop.com loads for me. Got that. YouTube just did the thing again. Scrolling back up. Uh, WAM FPV says, what rates do you run? Uh, I run Betaflight's actual rates. I turn the center stick sensitivity all the way down as low as it'll go, which is 10. Uh, I run the uh, max rotational rate at 800, believe it or not. Uh, and then I run the Expo at 0.8. Uh, there's a huge knee in my rates when you get to the very end of the stick travel. 
but I never sp I don't really spend any time at the end of the stick travel. Um, the the 800 degrees is just for whatever reason in my brain when I when I blip the stick to the plastic and back to center, 800 degrees lands me perfectly uh, inverted. Uh, and then if I wanted, I don't really ever do a full roll, but when I want to do a full roll, 800 degrees lands me completely flat. Um, I, I tried for a long time to run the, the, the max rotation rate at like 600 and 700, but I would always under rotate and I would have to add a little bit more and that's just silly. Um, I just, like I said, I just don't use the stick ends much. So having such a violent um, knee on the, on, the, on the rate graph uh, doesn't really matter because I'm just never putting the stick out that far. And then when I do put the stick out that far, you know, once or twice a battery, it lands perfectly. And that's exactly what I want. So, uh, Michael Blade says, hey there. Wom FPV also says, uh, I modified the bunny ear file to fit it into 360 code. Do you want to print? I do, Wom FPV. That is amazing. Hey, can you, um, that's incredible. Can you, uh, message me anywhere? Uh, did, you didn't happen to move it. What, you didn't happen to open it up in the four. Here's the the only problem that I have with this mount is it's a little bit too far back. Um, I have this mount on the seventy. It's fine on the sixty five, but on the seventy five, on the seventy five, the front ducts are a little bit farther forward, and this exact uh, geometry mount starts to pick up the ducts a little bit early. Um, you didn't happen to open it up in the forward direction only, did you? That would be amazing. I, I, I would love for the Insta360 Go to just be a little bit farther forward. Um, if, if that's too much to ask, I totally get it. Don't, 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 don't modify it anymore, but I'm just curious. Um, yeah, I would love that WAM FPV. I, I would uh, greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate that. FPV Trucker says, happy hump day. Chris, uh, can you message me, Ciotti FPV, anywhere you want? Facebook, Instagram, or what I use the most, but smoke signals, email, whatever. Uh, Chris Croft says, I'm using Chrome and it worked. Okay, good. All right, so I just got to figure out why it's not. I got to probably clear the cache or something. Fly, uh, Fly Zone says, nice, with a thumbs up. Big FPV says, the double stack is 500 milliwatts. Is it really? Well, that's pretty dope. Um, I didn't even realize that. It's a shame it doesn't fit in anything. Um, hmm. I've been kind of tempted to build a third Cinesplore. If I do, maybe I'll put it on there. I mean, the, the, the problem with that with that double stack is it's you can't crash it. Um, having two PCBs pinned together is the worst thing you can possibly do. Um, and yeah so that's scary like i can't really justify putting that into one of the existing cinesplores um that i use for work because if i bash into something with them and the vtx lets go like that ain't cool um so yeah i'll have to look at putting that into a third it would be nice to have a third cinesplore though god forbid one of the two blows up having a third one, um, you can just swap that, you know what I mean? Like, there, there's a saying in the film industry, two is one and one is none. Um, the people that have been really doing it for a long time, the saying is three is one and two is none. Um, basically saying that, like, when you show up, if you only have one of something, it's gonna fail and you're screwed. So you have to have at least two of everything. Realistically, when it comes to rigs, you wanna have three of everything. Um, so it would be nice to have a third Cinesplore, and I've got 2004 motors coming out of my ass, so, uh, yeah, maybe I'll go that route for that shark bite. Do a little build, throw that together, I don't know when the hell I'll have time to do it, but we'll figure it out. Uh, what's up, Doom239? Alright, cool, so we're, um, we're caught up. Let's dive into, actually, no, hold on. Liquid, uh... Look at this shit. Look at this big old box that showed up. I'm not even totally sure what this is. I think I know what it is. You guys are gonna find out as I find out. Where's the... 
Um, I think... I think that this is a... a, uh, a bind and fly. Uh, Joshua wanted to try to, um, do a simultaneous Synologue, um, review with me. Uh, three and a half inch Synologue, I believe. But uh, it didn't get shipped out in time. The the release date is... I probably shouldn't be saying... I, yeah, forget I just said that. Um, the release date is like tomorrow or some shit. So it's... I, I don't really have enough time to test it. But... Um, GepRC makes the Synalog, right? Uh, I'm not gonna... Maybe I won't show it. Because it, it might be... I shouldn't even be talking about it. Like... No, actually, I, I think it's fine to talk about it. They usually embargo, like, the content. Um, but they don't typically embargo talking about it. Yeah, so that's what it is. Um, uh, this is what it looks like. Great. Uh, <laughs> some stuff in the box. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna play it safe and not and not hold it up to the camera. Uh, it's it's a three and a half inch cinema. I mean, look at the look at the Cinelog thirty and add half an inch. That's what she said. Uh, well, you know, I will. Uh, so hold on. Let's see if the uh, let's see if the motors are notchy. These props are gorgeous. Let's see if the motors they are not. They are nice and smooth. Fan effing tastic. We're off to a good start, boys and girls. Um, yeah, motors are nice and smooth. Way to go, Gep RC. Oh, it's on 2004s. Cool. T what? It's a 2004-2550KV. Oh, Christ. They sent me a digital one. Well, ain't gonna be testing this. Uh, I guess what I'll do is, uh, next time Patrick and I hang out, uh, I'll have to bind it up to his, uh, to his DJI goggles. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that Joshua specifically told them to send me a, uh, an analog one feels pretty stiff again I don't I don't want to show it to you guys because I don't want to piss them off it's it's very cool that they sent this to me um, like I said I probably shouldn't even be talking about it but usually it's okay to talk about new release stuff as long as you don't like yeah show it and jump up and down cool it's pretty big it's like noticeably bigger than the uh, than my Cinesplorers. Yeah, it's pretty big. Damn. Jesus. Yeah, it is big. Interesting. Um, I don't feel like it's any. Doesn't really feel like it's any lighter either. Let me see. Throw it on the scale for you guys. Uh, so this is without any TPU or anything like that, and this is with digital, which is kind of heavy. Uh, 235 grams, uh, and then this this does have TPU on it, so this isn't really the most fair thing ever. Uh, but this is uh, 270. So after the TPU, it'll definitely be a little bit heavier, um, and it, it, it doesn't have like the full, big, tall... Uh, ducts that the uh, the Cinesplor has um, so it's not going to be as safe but um, we're talking about this for me Tim <laughs> I 
I can't. I don't. I don't want to show it because it's it's not out yet. Uh, but it's the it's the Cinelog 35, the three and a half inch Cinelog. Uh, very cool of them to send it. Hopefully they're not pissed uh, that I just kind of showed it on the stream a little bit. Uh, but I really didn't show it all that much. Uh, so cool. Yeah, next time Patrick is over, I will uh, ask him to bring his DJI goggles and uh, we'll fly the damn thing because by then it'll probably be released um, and, and I'll probably be able to talk more about it. But I mean, I don't really know. <coughs> I don't really know what else to say about it, to be honest. I mean, it's a, it's a Cinelog 30 plus a half an inch. There you go. Chris Croft says, Get RC posted about it, but hasn't shown the quad yet. Yeah, there's, I mean, it's not, there's nothing to really see. It's, it's just a bigger, a bigger, a bigger log. It's a bigger shit log 30. Um, not that it's shit. I just, shit log is a funny way of, you know, poops. Your, you know, your poops. They're like little shit logs. Uh, caught up on chat. Hey, uh, by the way, that little uh, mailbag thing is by Mighty Car Mods. Go subscribe to their channel. They're terrific people. I just viciously stole it from them without asking. I'm sure they will never find out. I hope they'll never find out. Um, what is this? Did I not record that other battery that I flew on the Tiny Whoop? I guess not. What is this? Oh, this is the um, this is the Nano Hawk. So I flew the Nano Hawk a little bit more. Here. Oh, what the hell? God damn it! Come on, man. There we go. Uh, See, so yeah, I, I flew the Nano Hawk a little bit more. It's all right. It's really quiet. It's really safe, but it just it just doesn't have much power. the The VTX is really the VTX and or the antenna are a real letdown. Um, I don't understand why they can't spend an extra dollar and put a v put a proper antenna on it. Um, or maybe it's the VTX. E uh, Emacs has been known to have. VTXs that don't really perform all that well. Um, I don't know. I get trying to make stuff cheap, but if you can't see where you're going when you go behind one tree, uh, that's that's no good. That's right. This is when I finally started crashing the thing a little bit. It held up really well. Um, I didn't really hammer it into anything, but uh, I smacked it into a couple things a few times, and it held up okay. Bent one of the propellers up pretty good. Bent it back. Was good to go. Um, yeah. Not a bad little rig. I, I, With how easy it is to build these little toothpick rigs, I, I, I think you're much better off just custom building something so that you can put it on a more powerful set of motors and have a frame that's got removable arms and stuff like that. Uh, like the FPV Cycle TP3 frame. But that's just me. <clears throat> A lot of people like just built, uh, buying uh, bind and flies, and, and that's fine. Uh, especially like for a beginner, this thing might be okay. Um, I say might be because, I don't know, I haven't been a beginner in, in a long time, so I, it, it's hard for me to kind of tell. But uh, yeah, it flies. Here's an example of it flying. The, the, the sun is black, some people that bothers. Um, the thing that really got me the most is just the lack of power. Uh, and it's, it is 1S only. You can't just like put it on 2S. The KV is a little low on the motors and the, and the stator volume is a little low on the motors. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Other than that, it's pretty fun. Pretty fun little rig. Super quiet. I mean, all, all these little guys, all these little 1S toothpicks are going to be very quiet, but, um... Especially on the on the new Emacs uh, three inch bi blade props, it, it's it's like I think it's the quietest rig I've ever heard or not heard. <laughs> um, but you know when when you don't have much power, like power makes noise, and uh, not the other way around. And uh, yeah, it's it's got 
not much power. So it's not going to be very loud. Uh, this is on the Gemfan 3018 by 2 propeller. I had to completely retune this thing for that propeller. You can see the bounce back there. Um, I I got a I got the tune a little bit better. I would just not run. The, I was trying to run those props because they're more they make more thrust than the Emax Avan three inch by blades. To be honest, I would just leave it on those. Yeah. So here I'm I'm putting some. Uh, I'm probably adding some P gain. What am I doing? I'm adding I gain now. And I'm just adding I gain. That's interesting. I, I landed this thing a couple times. And um, oh, I'm, I'm moving up the D min as well so that the D gains don't go as low. Uh, the higher the D min, the higher the D gains are when they're needed. And uh, that's a good thing. It's it's. It allows them to raise up quicker when when you get uh, any kind of bounce back. What am I doing here? Messing with the throttle expo. Oh yeah, yeah, the throttle midpoint that was a little bit too low. So yeah, just farting around with the tune. Um, I think that did get rid of some of the bounce back. Apparently not enough because here I go landing it again. What am I doing with the pids now? Is this when I was messing? Yeah, this is when I messed with turning the P's down just to see if that would would have any effect, uh, and it definitely made it worse. So then I should land one more time, and I move them back up, and I think I went really high on them. Uh, it does have some like full throttle oscillation. Yeah, see like that lack of power to try to get up over that tree. Um, yeah, it's just got a very, very small motor on it. The KV is not all that high on it. Um, but I have impossible standards. Fair warning, right? But if you want something that flies absolutely amazing, the stuff that I consider, you know what I mean? Like, like that's what's nice about having high standards is things will fly really good. Uh, eventually. So yeah, there's some uh, Emacs NanoHawk X feedback for you guys. Not that you'd asked for, it. but uh, you got it anyway. Chris, uh, cool. So we got it. Let's play. Let's install a flight controller on a five-inch FPV cycle glide, and we're gonna do that over here at the workbench. Why is this camera sideways? Why every time? I feel like every time I look at this camera it's more fucked up than the last time why is that all wobbly now what what are you wobbling for what okay that should be better um all right so we are going to put this pyro drone 20 by 20 flight controller into the front of this Basher FPV Cycle Glide. Uh, I think the ESC is good to go. I've got the LED wired up, the VTX wired up, the capacitor wired up to the battery leads. I used super glue, so it looks like it's snowed. That was maybe a, a mistake, but it'll be all right. Uh, this is going to be, so this, uh, this glide build has kind of like the least amount of wires hooked up to the flight controller that's possible. So this will be a fairly straightforward install. Uh, we've got a microphone in here with audio going directly back to the VTX, and then it's got its own little positive and negative looking for five volts so we've got to find five volt pads that are pretty close to this mic because I cut those wires really short from the previous flight controller um, and then we've got this little bundle here this green and yellow uh, this is hooked up to the VTX so yellow is going to be video out from the flight controller green is going to be smart audio and then we've got the camera cable here 
which is being powered by the 5 volt out on the VTX and then we've just got a little uh, video in to the flight controller here and that's it the, those are the only no that's not true that's not true uh, there's another wire bundle tucked away and hidden from the Crossfire Nano here uh, that's going to need 5 volt ground um, RX and TX and I don't know which one is which so we'll have to look that up as well but that's okay that'll be easy so what I want to do is get all this stuff running <clears throat> under the uh, the ESC all these bundles of wires I want them running under the um, the ESC here so let's just do that and trying to sort of keep them a little bit organized here. It's going to kind of depend on um, where the pads are going to be on the flight controller, though. So let's dive into that. Uh, JT Custom Knives says, Have you seen the iFlight 80 amp ESC? Is it explosion proof? I haven't even seen it. Uh, the only way to know if it's explosion proof is going to be after people start flying it and crashing the shit out of it. So that's going to take a while to figure that out. Um, so, the first thing to figure out when you're installing a flight controller is how you want to orient the flight controller. You can put it like this, you can put it like that, you can put it like that, you can put it like that, you can put it like this, you can put it like that, like that, and like that. Typically, to make your life easy, you want the USB port facing left or right. It depends on where you mount this thing, but usually you want this USB port going left or right. So realistically what that means is that you want to mount this like this or like that or like that or like that. So we've gone from eight options down to four. That's kind of nice. Um, the next thing that I usually think about is the big plug header that goes from the flight controller to the ESC. Um, in some cases, these two things are going to be far enough away where you need to point that plug header directly at the ESC. In my case, that's not true, um, although it also depends on the cable that you're given. I have a million of these cables, so it doesn't really matter to me, but um, it's just something to think about. The next, the next thing to think about, um, I always try to mount this so that the video in is on the front and the video out is on the back just to make because like no matter what you're gonna have to feed the camera in to to, to the front of it basically and then the VTX is gonna be in the rear of it so it, it really helps with cable management and having the shortest possible run on your um, noise on, on your uh, on your video line to, to keep it from being noisy um, I said that like an eight-year-old. You want to keep your video lines as short as possible because they are prone to picking up electrical noise. There we go. And one of the ways to do that is to put the, the video in pads on the front, video out pads in the back. Um, so let me take a look at some of the silk screening on this. Uh, we do have a CS pad on here. That is typically camera signal. So it looks like camera signal pad is right here. Now I'm going to look for the VTX pad um, to see where the, the VTX signal is going out from. I would love it if it was back here. Got a VBAT. It is, it's in the back here. So um, the, the silk screening is kind of hard to read on here. So let's pull up the, um, let's pull up PyroDrone's product page so that we can look at uh, the wiring diagram. This is just a good idea to have this uh, up on a screen uh, when you're installing a flight controller. So we're gonna go into the 20 by 20 flight controllers and we're just going to look for the yellow one and here it is MPU 6000 with pit mode 
Yeah, that's the one. Okay, cool. So they should have, and they do. Uh, camera. Make sure this is the same one. Yep, this is the same one. Camera connector, receiver connector, but then there also are the pads. BTX connector, TBS Nano Direct solder pins, board direction. <clears throat> Where is a full pin out? Give me the full pin out, yo. There we go. That's what I want. Wow! Way to go, Comcast, you gigantic assholes. Okay, here we go. So, we've got, uh, so here's the top of the flight controller with the camera in. Uh, this is a little cutaway. Uh, uh, it's actually, this is the opposite side of this right here. Um, and then here's the back of the flight controller and there's a VTX. So yeah, the VTX signal out is the third pad over. So that's good. I really like that about this, uh, about this flight controller, that it's got camera in on one side and the VTX out on the other side. Not a lot of flight controllers do that, unfortunately. Um, so I do really dig that. Um... So then we've got the crossfire off on those through pads, which are on the left there. That's fine. Um, I'm not going to use any of these plug headers because they fail. Um, the uh, These stupid-ass little Molex plugs, or whatever the hell they're called, uh, they have like a lifespan of like 20 unplugs and plugs. It's awful. Uh, so I try to use them as little as possible. Uh... I'm already going to have one of them. I, I, I do like to have the camera be on a plug. Um, but other than that, I try not to use these uh, plug headers. It's easy to solder. Just solder stuff. It's better. Uh, just kind of looking around to see if there's anything. Uh, anything that... Uh, any other pads that I want to be aware of. Those are the LED pads there. So this side is gonna be in the back, so what I'll probably do is tap into these LED, this LED five volt and ground here, um, in order to power the um, the uh, the little microphone that I have on there. Oh, that sucks, Rob. Rob's having issues with Comcast too. Uh, cool, one flashing used Pyrogen F7, that's good. Okay. Yeah. I see what I need to see. What is that? That's interesting. Uh, I do need to find a um, a UART for... No, I don't. No, I don't. I'm not going to do camera control. Fuck that noise. Uh, okay. Yeah, this is going to be fairly straightforward. So let's just dig into it. So what all of that means is the way that I'm going to mount this is with this side forward. So all I need to decide, so now instead of having four options, I've only really got two options. So I'm going to either mount it like this or I'm going to mount it like this because I want to make sure that this stuff is all facing forward. Um, if I mount it like this, the USB is going to be facing down, which is going to be a little bit harder to get a USB plug in there, but not the end of the world. Um, but what I like about mounting it down like this is, um, these big bastards are going to be facing down, uh, and, and like sort of out of the way, but we do have this one big plug header here, but it's recessed back, which is kind of nice. Uh, so this guy's going to be plugged in here, but it's a, what, what you got to be careful of is that your camera is going to have up tilt on the front of the uh, glide frame. Um, so if there's a big ass connector all the way forward, it's kind of a pain in the ass. Um, I will not have that problem because this has been recessed back. But what I do want to make sure of. Yeah, okay. So once this is plugged in, I do have access to these pads. I need to use uh, one of these pads for the camera. Uh, the camera video in, but I, that might be it. That might be the only pad up here that I need to use. So what do we got? We have RX6, TX6, 5-volt ground, camera control, 
camera signal, that's the pad that I'm going to use, another ground pad, and a VBAT pad. Um, so yeah, the only, the only pad here I'm going to use is the camera signal. So let's start getting, let's tin the pads that we are going to be using. So we're going to tin this camera signal pad for one. And then uh, they want you to hook the crossfire up on, uh, according to their wiring diagram, over here on these through holes. So we've got ground, 5 volt, RX1, and TX1. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with their suggestion, and I'm going to use these pads. That's totally fine. What's nice about going with the pads that they suggest that you use is that down the road, you can just refer back to the product page and know where you've put the, where you have your crossfire wired up rather than having to dig through it and try to see if you can find, like, it, it's just easier. It just makes your life easier. Um, and then there really aren't any pads on this side that are all that interesting. Um, <clears throat> so I just need to look at what these bottom pads are. So three pads over is the VTX, so I am going to use that. And then the only other thing that I need is a TX pad, a transmit pad. And it looks like there's one of those right next door. It looks like there's T, can't even see it. TX4, maybe. Silk screening is kind of tough. Oh, nice. There's a five volt and ground all the way off on this side. That's fantastic. So I'm gonna use the five volt and ground that are off on this side to power the little microphone. That's beautiful. Um, and then I'm gonna use the third pad over for video out. Uh, and then I just need a, a, a transmit pad. Let me let me look at the um, let me look at this again. Um, man, that's hard to read. Video signal. Oh, right next door. There we go. Beautiful. Third pad over and the fourth pad over. That's a smart audio line. Fan fucking tastic. So third pad, fourth pad, skip, skip, and then the last two. So let's get some of these. Uh, let's get some of these tinned up, or let's get all of these tinned up. You know, that'll probably work better. So we're gonna put a little flux on the pads that. I want to tin, there's the camera signal, and these three guys. Uh, I'm actually not going to tin these because they're through holes. I'm going to wait until the wire is in there and then I'm going to add the solder uh, to use the actual through hole. Through holes are kind of a pain in the ass, but they're very strong. So. Um, if you're good enough at soldering, I do recommend that you use them because you're going to get a little bit of extra uh, strength from using them, which is really nice. This is this strange little thing of tip reconditioner. You can get this or something similar on Amazon. Seems to help a little bit. Robert, oh, we got that. All right, cool. So let's get to business here. Soldering iron should be, yep, 700 degrees. Good to go. Let's do some tin in. So we're going to start with this camera signal pad here. The fuck, come on, bitch, get off of there. All right, camera signal pad first. All right, and then I'm going to skip those. Uh, we're going to go three pads over here. The one right next to it. That is video out and uh, smart audio. And then we've got a five volt pad and a ground pad that we're going to power that microphone off of. Um, and then we're also going to use these four pads. Um, so that 
is kind of it in terms of the pads that we're going to be um, needing to have soldered. What I can do is leave this ESC up and then do some of the work here. Um, yeah, kind of no reason not to. These guys, this is going to be a little tight. Let me, let me do this. Let me untwist this bundle of wires here and see what the wire lengths look like. Come on. Okay. So, there we go. Uh, from the crossfire, we've got... Does that drawing tell me which to run where in the crossfire? That would be really nice if it did. Hey, it does. So it wants me to run... Oh, perfect. Okay, they oriented. Oh, oh, right, because they set them up so that you can pin header. You can mount it with a pin header. You shouldn't do that, but you technically can. Um, so my wire lengths here. Okay, so the the five volt and ground are longer, uh, but on this they're going to be farther back. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to twist up the um, the five volt and ground together separate of the uh, the RX and the TX and what that's going to do is that's going to sh uh, shorten them a little bit and I'll show you that in a second here once I get it all twisted up so a second ago this 5 volt and ground was a little bit longer and now you can see it's pretty much the exact same length um, as the other two so let's give it a little bit more twistage here to really shorten it up a little bit extra and there, now it's a little bit shorter than those two guys. Um, just take the last little bit and untwist it. Uh, and I'm gonna need to clean up the uh, the ends of these. Let's let's do that now. The ends of these wires are all janky and angry. So let's just flatten them out. That's gonna be important in using the through holes to be able to get them through the damn things. All right, so the five volt is looking good. Now let's fix the ground. Oh, perfect, that was quick. All right, so those two guys are all set. Now we've got RX and TX here. I wish I hadn't used yellow and green. Yellow, try to only use yellow for video to make your life easier. I was probably being lazy with this. Uh, green is okay. But yeah, try to only use yellow wires for video. It's kind of like a... Yellow is sort of like a the, the, the accepted color for video. You see it all over the place. Come on. There we go. All right, that's gonna work. Although let me, the sheathing is a little close. Let me see if I can pull the the silicone insulation back a little bit with my finger now. Uh, you know what? No, I'm just gonna. Well, wait. Hold on. Let me see. Oh, there we go. That's perfect. Okay, that's the right amount. Uh, I am gonna twist uh, these RX and TXs but much more lightly uh, than the uh, the 5 volt and ground because I don't want to shorten them up. I just want them to be together. I just want them to be friends um, so that they don't, yeah, so that like one of these cables doesn't go rogue and try to sneak out the side into the propellers. Um, so yellow is on the outside and what that means is that yellow is going to be the farthest forward, which is kind of annoying because the yellow wire is a little bit shorter here. But we're going to be okay. We've got enough cable length. 
uh, to get this done. So yeah, I'm just going to leave them twisted up that much. That's kind of a, a light amount of twisting. And uh, while I'm at it, I'm actually going to shorten up this green wire ever so slightly, just so that it's not a clusterfuck um, on top of this thing. So let's pull the insulation with our fingernails so that we don't nick any of the wires. If at all possible, you want to try to remove the insulation with your fingernails rather than using metal cutters, especially with uh, these really thin 30 gauge wires. These typically only have eight uh, internal strands. So if you nick one of those internal strands, it's actually going to make a big difference, right? More than 10%. It's like a 12% decrease in, in the amount of uh, uh, actual conductive material inside the, the 30 gauge wire. So don't do that. All right, so the, the through holes are kind of the biggest pains in the ass. So let's do those first. And we're going to jump into that right now. Uh, but they are uh, the farthest forward. So let's actually do the um, Let's actually do the positive, uh, the five volt in the ground first. So let's get this going here and we'll feed the ground through and then we'll feed the five volt through. So here's how I like to use these through holes. I try to put two wires through at the same time, dry, and then I'll stand the flight controller up like this so that I can kind of control how these I want I want the wires to be all the way through there, and then you can just look at the bat at the bottom of the through hole, and you can kind of see them peeking through, right? So now all you're going to do is put heat on one side with with the tinned tip of the soldering iron, and then you're going to try to feed solder either from the other side, or a lot of times you can feed it in through the same side. Uh, I'm going to feed it in through the same side here. So we're going to tin the tip of the soldering iron. We're going to apply the heat. And then we're going to add a little bit more solder. So there, and there we go. And you're going to try to push a bunch of solder in there because you're trying to push solder through the through hole up to, to get like full sort of penetration. That's what she said. Uh, so that was the five volt. Now we're going to try the ground. And you're going to be a little bit patient because you want to make sure that the entire through hole heats up, right? You got your, your, you got your through hole here, and you got your wire going through it, and then you're adding solder back here. You want the solder to travel all the way through. Once the whole through, once the through hole gets gets fully hot, it's gonna like that that solder is gonna flow all up in there, and it's gonna give you a really really strong solder joint. Um, so that's good to go. We're going to do it one more time here with the RX and TX. Same deal. See if you can put two of them through at a time. And good to go. That was way too easy. And just get the flight controller standing up here. Make sure that the insulation is butted up against the PCB for the strongest possible connection. And... There we go. All right, same deal. We're gonna come in with a tinned soldering iron tip at an angle, and then we're just gonna add a little bit of solder. And just be patient so that the whole thing gets hot. That was one. There's the other. And you do want a little bit of a nub of solder on the bottom here, the side that you're adding it to, uh, that's a sign that there is enough solder in that through hole to have that nice strong connection. And then you can just kind of check them on the top here. And we're looking really good. If the wire's backed out and there's a big gap between the silicone insulation and the PCB, all you gotta do is grab that wire, push it forward a little bit, and just touch the tip of the soldering iron to the back of the pad 
it'll liquefy the whole thing and then you can just push the wire in a little bit. That kind of happened with the yellow ever so slightly, but it like it's not enough to uh, to warrant doing that. It, it only pushed it out like a fraction of a millimeter. Um, so we're good. Give them a little tug, make sure that they're not moving, and you can kind of fold them over a little bit just so that they're not standing straight up. So we got those two guys on. Um, one of the next things that we maybe want to do is the five volt and power from the microphone, maybe. Um, you know what? No, let's handle the um, let's handle the uh, the VTX next. So here's the little VTX wire bundle. Uh, it is way too long, but we're gonna spin the shit out of it here and see how much shorter that we can make it. It's it's not gonna get short enough, I'm pretty sure. But we'll try anyway. Yeah, there's still, still gonna be a bunch of extra, but that should be fine. Um, there's only five volt coming off here, so we're just gonna push this over a little bit like that. And then, um, yeah, there we go. And then it's gonna link up to the back here like this. And then the microphone, uh, five volt and ground are gonna hook up right there. So at this point, I'm gonna drop the, uh, the flight controller in where it belongs. And we're gonna do everything. Uh, maybe not. That's gonna make it a little difficult. Let me do the uh, let me do these guys on the on the wood block here. Uh, these guys being the the VTX and the smart audio. So yeah, let's take this guy, pull him through here, and spin these back up here as tight as I can. Okay, cool. So that's on the side. I'm gonna just fish this through. And when you're doing this shit, if, if you're if you're working on it um, with the flight controller not in the rig, just just be careful. Make sure that you don't put the um, make sure that you don't have like one wire on top of the other wire in the wrong direction, and then you have to pull it apart and resolder it. It's just it's just one of those things that you'll make the mistake, and then you'll learn from it, and then you'll be fine from then on out. Uh, so. Here we go. These are kind of oriented where I want them to be. I'm gonna do the video first because it's on that side. You don't wanna solder uh, from near to far. You wanna solder from far to near or from left to right if you're right-handed. Um, so let's just get this exactly where we want it. Okay, beautiful. Nice and flat on the pad. Left hand is gonna control the wire. Right hand is just gonna bring the heat. You do not wanna be trying to control the wire with the tip of the soldering iron. That is never gonna work well. Your left hand is to control the wire. Your right hand is to bring heat. All right, that's down. Let me zoom this in to see if I can give you guys a little bit of a better idea of what I'm doing. Uh, usually my hands are in the way and whatnot, but we'll try it anyway. Worth a shot. Bring that over a little bit like that. Okay, cool. Uh, so now I'm gonna do the smart audio wire, which is right next door. Pull this guy out here. Grab them the way I want them with the tweezers. And he's gonna go right on that pad there. Let me actually adjust how I'm holding these tweezers. Mm, no, that's still not where I want it. This is where you wanna take your time right here. Getting it so that you're holding the tweezers the way you want to, so that the wire is sitting perfectly on the pad. 
uh, don't just bring the soldering iron in and, and just have this approach of like, oh, I'll fix it once the heat's on it. Like, that's not going to work well. Um, get it right right now so that all you have to do is bring the heat in, touch it for a split second, and move on. Like this. There you go. There's the video out and the smart audio. Let's take a quick look with the 5X loop. Make sure they're not bridged. They are not. Check the other ones. Yeah, they look good too. Cool. So now the only extra pad that we've got is the, uh, the camera in. And we're going to do that with this thing mounted. Oh, uh, we also have to do the, um, the little microphone uh, five volt and ground. Let me see how I can do that. Those cables are so goddamn short. Um, oh, that's nice. It's kind of going to sit. Will it sit up like that? Can I get it to sit up? Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. So, I don't remember which one is which. Uh, let me look over at the monitor. Uh, so it looks like 5 volt is on the outside, ground is right next to it. Cool. So, 5 volt is on the outside. We are going to do that second. Ground is on the inside. We are going to do that first. So we're going to grab the ground wire with the tweezers. Move it in the tip of the tweezers to where you want it, where I want it. Get it lined up on the pad, and then bring the heat in. Tin the tip of the soldering iron. Bring the heat in. Oops. I've got too much solder on the tip of the iron. Let me get some of it off of there. That's better. All right, we've got that, and then we're going to do the 5 volt here next. Okay. Same deal. Tin the tip of the soldering iron. Get it on the pad where you want it, and just touch it with heat. And there we go, our microphone has power. And the very last pad is gonna be the camera video in to put the camera video into the, uh, into the OSD chip. And the question is, do I want to run this under the flight controller? If I run this under, it kind of runs out of cable. Mm. So there is like a plug header on it. Um, I don't love, I don't love that. Uh, I think I'm going to run it. Let's see, but then I have all this cable coming out of the camera, so I could just loop that back up like that. Or, the other option is, the safer option is to run this up over the flight controller. So I'll pull it out here, get these motor wires out of the way. Pull it up and out there. Um, make sure it's not creating a mess under here. That nah, looks okay. I do need it to reach up to the front. I think I'm going to do it off on this side like that. Yeah, so let me give these guys a little spin. And uh, just to take some of the length out of them, like we've been doing with everything. And again, this is a little bit different. This rig 
I have the camera being powered by the 5 volt out on the VTX. Um, that is a very clean source of power for the camera. Um, I don't necessarily know if it's worth it to do it this way, to be completely honest with you guys, but um, it's fine. Uh, it, it, it seems to be working okay. It, it takes a little bit of the stress off of the, it's just one less thing being powered by the five volt um, BEC on the flight controller, which is kind of a good thing um, because the, the flight controller BECs do have a tendency to blow up. I've absolutely had that experience. So yeah, I don't know. Well, now it's a little bit too short, so I need to actually take some of those rotations out of it. That's better. Okay, that's just about right. So let's get that video wire and the tweezers here. I'm going to run it sideways. So what I like to do when I put these things on the pad sideways is make sure that the wire is all the way down flat against the board and then we just bring the heat in just touch it for a split second and it'll give a beautiful little uh, solder joint so let's bring this in here all right there we go Take a tiny little bit of this extra solder off of here. There we go. And I just want to come in one more time. Because of the fact that I have a, a plug header uh, that's going to be on top of this, I want there to be, I want this wire to be as flat as it possibly can be. Um, so let me just do that real quick here. There it is. Okay, cool. That's what I wanted to see. Nice and flat, dead center on the pad. Good to go. And that, my friends, is how you install a flight controller on a mini quad. Um, we've got our wires managed properly um, going under the ESC so that we don't have to worry about them moving all around, getting hung up on the... Um, on the uh, uh, the battery straps or anything like that. We've got the wires rotated together here so that they're uh, all neat and tidy. If you believe in twisted pairs, you've got your twisted pairs, although uh, apparently it doesn't really do anything. Um, from what I've been told from people that uh, are much more knowledgeable uh, about electricity than me, namely my father. And uh, yeah, we're pretty much good to go. So the last little thing that I do is just to kind of play around with these wires to just tuck them away um, so that they're in the best possible positions. And that's looking really good. Just kind of like, you know, move them around, push them down, get them into spots that make sense. And so this camera plug is going to probably go like under the um, under the uh, the flight controller there. I'm sorry, not under. Um, under the the cable going between the flight controller and the ESC. Um, so this is a. Um, there might be. a um, connector to connector wire that works. Let's check this one real quick. So this is... So the plug on the flight controller is pins up. So if this is pins up, let me look at the, the wiring diagram. Pins up, we've got... Nope, that ain't gonna work pins up we've nope that ain't gonna work so the motors 
are all the way off on the side. That's interesting. That is uh, a little abnormal. Not totally off the rails, but a little weird for it to be like that. Uh, so what I think I'm going to end up doing is making a cable. Oh, they think this is the cable that it came with. Uh, I don't know if this is the cable that ca this is this is the cable that came with the flight controller. So I'm going to use this. So that that means that this is probably set up properly, right? So I mean, it fucking better be. Uh, so when it's pins up, uh, we've got VBAT ground. Okay, cool. Yeah, this is it. VBAT ground telemetry current and then the motors. VBAT ground telemetry current and then the motors. Cool. So. I'm going to grab a 8-pin connector out of this handy little kit here, uh, which might be this. And the way that you can tell is to just test fit them. This ain't the one. This is way too small. Uh, that must be an 8 there. It looks gigantic. That's probably the one. So just hold it up to, I mean, you can even plug it in. Yeah, that's it. And I'll also count it just for the sake. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh God, that's a, is that a 10 pin? Oh, it is. Uh, TX current motors, one, two, three, four, positive, positive, negative, negative. So this, uh, um, yeah, so we need to skip some. We need to just skip some. No, that's it. We just need to skip some. Uh, let's go up here. All right, cool. So on this plug header, we are also pins up. That's good. So when I have this guy pins up, uh, uh, ground is all the way in here. So let's take one of our grounds. Well, we only have the one ground. So let's take our ground again just to confirm we are pins up. All right, cool. And then these will only really go in one way. So you can only really get them in there one way. So we've got negative all the way on the outside. We're going to skip one, and then we're going to do the VBAT. And there we go. And when you plug these in, you'll, you'll feel them click. Uh, and then we're going to skip again, and then we've got motor 4321. Uh, whereas on the flight controller, how are the motors numbered? Motor 1234 from the outside in. Okay, so motors 1234 from the outside in. So white is motor 1. So I want white to be 3 in from the outside of the ESC. Uh, so that means one, two, three. Okay, cool. Is that the third one in? Yep, that's the third one in. All right, great. So then it's gonna be brown, because that's right next door here. And get out of the way. Take your time doing this because if you fuck these up, it's going to be real bad. And then we got a little bit of green action here. Get that guy in there. All right, feel it click. And then blue. Okay, and then we've got that skip because it's another VBAT. Uh, so that's good. And then on the outside, We've got TX and then current, whereas on the flight controller, uh, the RX is right next to the ground. Okay, so the RX is right next to the ground, uh, which means that it's pink. RX is pink. Let me feed these through up on top here. Uh, RX is pink right next to the ground, and that's going to go to the TX, which is all the way on the outside. Um, so I'm going to do yellow first, one in, 
and then pink all the way on the outside. And there we have it. That is how you make a little ESC to flight controller cable. I really, really, really like that Pyrodrone gives you this cable with the, the little ends crimped on. Oh shit, they even give you, I didn't even see this. Uh, they give you eight and 10. I could have just used this one. This is a 10, or maybe that's a 10. But yeah, they give you the little plug headers. That's amazing. This is what all the ESC and flight controller manufacturers should do. They should just give you these cables with the, the one for the, you know, whichever the component is that it's coming with, and then the, the, the naked ones on the other side because there's just so many goddamn combinations of ESCs and flight controllers that it feels like you never, ever, ever have the right pre-made cable. Um, I really wish that everybody did this. Pyrodrone, great work. Um, so now we just want to double check. We've got pins up, positive, negative, negative, positive, good. And then we've got motors, four, three, two, one. And then we've got yellow and pink. Pink is TX. Uh, and then pink on here is next to ground. And that's marked RX, good to go. And then current is yellow and then we've got current yep so we are all set we are going to plug this guy in here make sure that you get these things seated all the way really give them a good push in there and then we're going to loop this guy around i'm actually going to give it a little twist here just to shorten the cable up a little bit, maybe another twist. And pins up. Uh, so I want it like this. And then, nope, 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 I want it like that because then it needs to fold over and the pins need to be up. Yeah, so they are. And what I like to do is I'll grab the wires on the back like that with this, uh, with this tweezer. Well, so here's the other thing. Um, make the, uh, allow the wires to make a 180, like right out of the plug. Like keep the, um, keep the twisted part from, from going all the way to the plug base. See what I'm saying there? So may, let the cable do a, uh, a 180 like that with the, um, with the wires flat. That's what you want. You want the wires flat so that they can make the quickest little 180. And then when you do that, it becomes a little harder to plug it in, but that's okay, you'll get it. Just sneak it in there, and get it buried in that plug header. And there we go. Our flight controller is plugged in to our ESC. And then what I like to do is just lift this little wire bundle up to make sure that it doesn't contact the flight controller. So we've got a little bit of a space in between that cable and the, uh, the top of the flight controller. See that? There you go. And then of course we're gonna put some nuts on the ESC, we're gonna put some nuts on the flight controller, we're gonna put some nuts in our mouth, chew them up, spit them out, uh, but I'm going to do that on my time. I'm actually going to um, get caught up on the chat real quick and shut this thing down because putting nuts on is no fun. Uh, I also need to solder up these, uh, these motors to the ESC. Uh, but I'm going to do that off the stream. What do you think of that, friends? Uh, disc not ejected properly. Eject wangle bork before disconnecting. Okay, CMYK says... Uh, what was the addition of super glue on this ESC for again? So these are the completely bulletproof Akon AK3235 amps. They have a single PCB with all the FETs on it. And then they've got a daughter board on the inside with the, um, uh, uh with the five volt regulator. I didn't think I had five volt. Does it have five volt out? Hold on. 
It does. It does. It's got... Oh, wow. I'm glad that I checked. Uh, oh, I got lucky. Okay. I got lucky. Uh, so there's two... There's two... So I said it's a it's a 10 pin, right? Ground, ground, positive, positive. It's actually not. It's And it, it says on the little instructions that Akon gives you. Um, it's ground, ground, VBAT, then 5 volt. Uh, then motors 4, 3, 2, 1. Uh, then current, then telemetry. 4, 3, 2, 1. Current telemetry. Okay, cool. Uh, I got lucky. I, I just happened to hit... Uh, I just happened to put that... Uh, uh, the, the red wire onto the VBAT... Um, rather than onto the 5 volts, so that's good. Um, cool. So yeah, we are good to go. That's all wired up properly. Um, does that answer your question? Oh, 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 right. So the, um, yeah, so if uh, I have crap, when I crash super, super, super hard with this ESC, this has happened to me twice, um, the daughter board is held on by six solder points. And if you hit it hard enough, you can break that daughter board off of the PCB. I then just soldered it right back on and it was totally fine. But um, usually I use epoxy. I just run a little bead of epoxy around that daughter board and that holds it down to the PCB forever. Um, this time I used super glue, which is why it looks like it's snowed. Um, hopefully the super glue will work as well. Next time I'm gonna do it with epoxy again. I, I just ran out of epoxy. Um, it's a cool little experiment that we'll do here. Uh, but yeah, that's why that's super good. Uh, Family Guyver says, uh, still working, glad I'm listening to CIDF TV. Gotta fly the sunset soon. Got uh, charged packs in the car. Drone Pilot says, hello, what's up Drone Pilot? Uh, I think I might be caught up. Uh, nope, Ricardo says, when you've got a new VTX, how do you unlock it when there's no info on how to do this? Thanks. Um, every single VTX, the unlock procedure is completely different. So you've got to look up the specific VTX that you've got, Ricardo. Um, there will be info somewhere on the internet. You might have to do a little bit of Googling. Um, but yeah, you, you um, uh, every VTX is different. I mean, not every not every single one is different. I'm sure there's some overlap, but like they're not all the same. Um, so you got to try to look for for look on like you might even have to dig in like RC groups sometimes. But you, Google Google will find it eventually. Um, cool. Caught up on chat. I'm hungry. I'm tired. Uh, I'm gonna go relax. Today was another big day. Um, tomorrow might be another big day. Uh, Sunday was a big day. Uh, Monday was also a big day. This has been... It's getting crazy, uh, but in a really, really good way. Uh, this is, that is not... That is by no means me complaining. Uh, it's just busy, but it's really, really, really good busy. And uh, I am a lucky boy. So... Thanks for hanging out, people. I love all of your faces. Uh, here's some more flying from 2019 at the crane. And uh, let me get some epidemic sound going here for you guys. For the little outro. I'll see you guys again on Friday at 7-ish o'clock. Unless I'm working. But I don't have anything. Uh, I don't have anything on the books right now, so we should be good. Thanks for hanging, people. I love you. Be good. My name's Aaron Ciotti. Go to ciottiftv.com and click all the buttons. And uh, yeah. Okay. What's that? Later.